Niners this offseason, they added Javon Hargrave. They added uh, Isaiah Oliver. They added Jake Moody. Um, did they improve their offense? They lost Mike McGlinchey and replaced him with his backup. They let um, Jimmy Garoppolo go and replace him with someone younger and cheaper, but not necessarily better. Same with McGlinchey. McKivitz is younger, cheaper, not necessarily better. Um, added two tight ends in the draft, and Ronnie Bell. Is the offense better? Um, well, lost I mean, Daniel Brunskill. Is, is, I mean, first of all, it's a lot about the quarterback. I mean, the off, the so much about the offense is about the quarterback. Who's going to play quarterback? I mean, is Trey going to make it to week one? Is Darnold actually as good as they, they're talking him up, or is he the guy that we all think can't do it? And then, um, and, and then is Brock, you know, forever diminished? I mean, to me, it seems like a major portion of the Niners' future will be determined in six weeks when Brock Purdy starts to throw. And we have a feeling if he's ready to roll or not. And if he's not ready to roll, now you're leaning on Trey Lance, who's inexperienced, or and hoping that he develops, and maybe he will, or Darnold, who who Kyle Shanahan describes as a quarterback that I'm not familiar with. Um, I don't know. I mean, I would say they're going to make incremental improvement in at wide receiver. They've got a little a little deeper at wide receiver. Um, they're a little bit deeper on the offensive line, even though they lose McGlinchey. I'm not. I'm not sure that McGlinchey to McKivitz is even a downgrade, really. I. I. I they're just different. Uh, they're a little deeper at 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 tight end. Um, they should be better at quarterback with the improvement of both of the young guys, or maybe all three young guys. Should be a little deeper at running back. Yeah, I would say. I would say they're about net neutral. I bet you that they're not better, but they're not worse. See, the way I see it is I think the quarterback room got a little worse. I mean, you had Brock last year. You had Trey last year. They're both coming off serious injuries, and now you're replacing Jimmy Garoppolo who's with someone just cheaper um, who, who might be better than him. But I think you took a step back at quarterback. Unless, unless Brock or, or someone just asserts themselves, uh, themself, himself as a franchise quarterback and you no longer care about the room, it's just the quarterback. Until you have a franchise guy and it's the room, I think the room took a step back. Until someone Brock takes a step is, forward. You think Brock, I think Brock, unless Brock's diminished, Brock's better. This is my reasoning. Unless Brock's diminished, Brock's better than Jimmy. Trey's got to be better this year than last year. And just because of to. experience. Well, doesn't have to. I, unless, we'll he, see. unless you think Burton's the ankle, on him. You think the ankle's diminished? See, to me, uh, the, there's no I, brainer he's getting better because he's just getting better. He, A kid who didn't he spent, play hardly at all. He spent six all. months rehabbing an ankle, not working on throwing. He needs to work know, on throwing. I, don't you think there's mental reps in this? In this, uh, in We'll this? see. I, we'll see. I, I'm not counting on it. I'm not counting against it, but I, we'll see. I don't know the what arrow, Trey's going to be. In my opinion, I don't think he improved at all from one. Up. I don't think he improved at all from year one to year two, so I'm not assuming that he's going to improve from year two to year three, That's considering fair. he didn't. Yeah, I'm not assuming that. That's fair. But, I mean, I would yeah. just I would assume that almost all players do improve w early in their career as they're more in the system. So I would say he's going to know the system better. He's theoretically going to have another camp to establish a rapport with his receivers. I, I, I think, the, like, to me, if you said Jimmy last year, Brock with what we knew, Sudfeld and Lance versus – the room they have now where Brock's ascended to the top spot, Trey's another I mean, year more experienced, and you have Sam Purdy, Darnold. So Purdy, didn't, Purdy was pre-UCL tear back then. Trey Lance was pre-ankle break back then. I like the quarterback room better last year. And then at offensive line, I think it's objectively worse. You lost McGlinchey. You lost Brunskill. They both got multi-year deals, and you replaced them with McGlinchey's backup, Matt Pryor on a one-year deal for the vet minimum, Feliciano on a one-year deal. I mean – he, I, I think he's got worse there. Now, now maybe Burford gets better, Banks gets better, Brendel gets better. That could Z all happen. Zakel supposedly that had could a great all option. happen for sure, for sure. Tight end room got better. Running back room, I mean, that's always improving. They, they all, they're, they're, it's always improving for sure. Wide end room, wide receiver room, the same. So I, I we'll see. I guess a lot depends on that offensive line that they didn't address, other than Matt Pryor and John Feliciano. That's amazing to me. And Zakel supposedly had a great offseason. Um, and um, they need Zakel to be the new Burford. Brunskill. They well, need Zakel to be the new Brunskill for sure. Yeah. 
Or, yeah. or you know, maybe is Zakel possibly? I got to check the arm length on Zakel. Maybe Zakel. 32 and three quarter, 32 and three quarter inch. A little bit shorter than you'd like, but it's like a quarter inch shorter than, than McKivitz. And he's a better athlete than McKivitz. Yeah, I did I like, ask John yeah. Lynch at the pre draft thing. I was like, hey, are you thinking about Zakel at, at, at tackle? And he was like, yep. yeah, we think he could play all five, is what he said. Which is so, nice. We'll see. That's nice That's on nice. game day. And that was Brunskill's yeah. thing, right? Yeah, Brunskill was deaf. Yeah. Brunskill was the smartest guy in the room, too. My God. Right. I did I did interviews with Brunskill last year, and I was like, whoa, this guy's easily the smartest guy That's on the Zikel entire too. team. I mean, it's amazing. That's Zakel, too. Have you talked to Zakel? Yeah. And Zakel, super smart. The, what I like about Zakel more is Zakel is tough and yeah. super smart Fordham kid. But like when you watched him two hand shiver guys in practice, I mean, this guy, this guy's strong in the upper body. I think Zakel might be the right tackle long term. Th that's actually, I think that would be the best case scenario because I'm look. let me look, let me pull up his pro day real quick. No, his combine. He was at the combine. You're in a five one at 316 pounds. He's six, six, three, 16 runs a five one. Like, yes, please smart get him on the damn field. Like smart. No one. Tough, motivated. Yes. McKivis doesn't have traits like that. Like Joey Fisher. God love him. Like w he's way smaller than, than Nick Zakel. Like, get him on the freaking field. Please. I would love to see Nick Zakel at right tackle. I will say this, though. I did an interview with Trent Williams last year when he talked about uh, Colt McKivitz, and it's like he just has total respect for McKivitz. And, I, I, you know, I, it's hard because I like McKivitz. You know, I like talking to McKivitz. But I, I actually think, you know, and Lynch brought it up, he was given that gold hel helmet designation. Now, it's odd that he brought it up because he should have also brought up, in addition, we waived him because they did wave him at one time. Uh -huh. So there's that going on too, but um you know, that you know we'll all conveniently forget that and just just acknowledge that McKivitz is really solid. They don't have a do let's be honest, they don't have a dominator at right tackle size-wise. I guess Pryor could be, right? Cuz he's what 67 330 and I haven't I haven't studied him a whole lot. Um I kind of think of him as the swing tackle. But to me, it's a lot about Burford. It's like if Burford gets his gets his foot feet a little quicker, maybe Burford's your right tackle. He was a very good right tackle blocking for Sincere McCormick a couple of years ago at, at Texas San Antonio. I mean, I know the NFL is a far difference between that level and it's Texas possible. San Antonio. But he's an I mean, I mean, it's possible because like they're, they're projecting a lot on McKivitz. He played 70 snaps last year and 68 snaps the year before that. Or maybe those are the – Hold on. Let me make sure. Let me get that right. And then he to ask 60, him to play the full 68 season. last year. He played 68 last year and 70 the year before that. You don't know if he can hold up for a whole year. What no. if he's the kind of girl, guy that plays four games and gets hurt in the fifth? You don't know. So they, they really, yeah, man, it better be Zakel, Burford. They got, it can't be Matt Pryor. He's, he's on his, what, third team in three years? I don't think it's Matt Pryor. I, I, I would mean. say no, too. If you had me guess, I would say that it's going to be a competition between Jalen Moore, who we know we, nobody ever talks Jaylen about Jalen Moore. Moore. He's there. In the they always room. say they want to play him at guard, but they never get him to guard. I actually thought two years ago in camp he looked good at left tackle, and then suddenly it's like his, his whole star is diminished. But I like Jalen Moore. I like McKivitz, and I really like this Joey Fisher kid. I, to me, I'm eager to see if Fisher what Fisher looks like when they start practicing. Um, because he's got a lot of things that you like. I mean, the, this guy is nasty. They, they haven't had a real offensive lineman like this who who just buries people and throws them down. Um, I at least I if you watch his film, Grant, it's Division Two, and he, it's a West Virginia Division Two school. So he's going up against guys who are going to be you know plumbers and doctors and teachers, and they're not going to play in the NFL. But the film is crazy. The guy is just I throwing people around. I want to see him in preseason because a lot of that stuff doesn't really show in training camp. It's a lot of like seven on seven kind of stuff or like 11 on 11 where no one touches the quarterback and he's doing those one on ones where it's pass protection stuff in a preseason. We'll actually get to see him run block and get out uh, in space. I want to see what that looks like because he's supposed to be a, nasty. I got a buddy who was down in Carson for the NFL collegiate bowl, PA collegiate bowl at the right around the Super Bowl. And he said that this guy just kicked ass in the practices. He looked phenomenal. And then he got invited to the Senior Bowl because he played well in that game. And then he breaks mm. his hand that week. And he went to the Senior Bowl, did all the measurements and the interviews and met people, but didn't play. Then didn't get invited to the Combine. 
then has the fastest 40 and the most reps on the bench. So there's some things to like, but he is a little short-armed, and that's a concern. You said something earlier that was interesting. You said, um, truthfully, it's not that big of a downgrade from McGlinchey to McKivitz. That's probably true. That being said, McGlinchey just got a bajillion dollars on the open market, and McKivitz didn't. But I think you're right. Um, it is, I think, somewhat of a downgrade, but not that much. And I think what the Niners learned is that McGlinchey, you say what you want about him, but he's not a first-round pick. If they had taken him in round five, no one would have a problem with what he gave the team, or even round three. But at round one, he was like, just not good enough. And I think if that's a skill set, just take guys in round five, six, and seven, and put them in there, and just lower the expectations. Like, no one's going to be mad at Colton McKivitz if he's not that good, because he's Colton McKivitz. If he is good, it's going to be like the greatest story ever. There's less pressure on him. They got, you know, into the NFC Championship game with Tom Compton when McGlinchey went down. I think McGlinchey was a, was a really good offensive lineman as a run blocker, but he had a real issue. He, he was heavy footed, long limbed yeah. and at six, nine or whatever he is, six, eight. Yeah. Um, he had a really hard time kicking out in his yeah. pass protection against the speed rushers. So to do that, he literally had to like be off balance Jump. and hurl yeah. himself out there. And then the better guys like Parsons would give him that right hand club and yeah. just club him and he and that's why we kept seeing him like literally airborne. getting airborne yeah because he's already going that way and you're yeah. knocking him with your arm it doesn't take so that he, much force you just it, yeah yeah it, his yeah. one weakness that inability to kick out against the best speed rushers made his game his pass protection game just come apart also i feel like his run blocking isn't the same uh it was much better but what before he tore his quad whatever tended muscle thing um, he used to be a tremendous run blocker, but now I feel like all the Niners' big runs go to the left. And I think that's another reason they didn't bring him back. It's like, we don't even run right that well anymore. What's the point? Yeah. I mean, the the the, mess, the, the moral of the story is don't draft right tackles in the top 10 picks in the first round. Don't. Now, Lane Johnson's a right tackle, but he, he it's like in name only. You know, he, he can play on an island over there. You don't have to help him at all. You can have open formations. He's a tremendous asset. He just happens to play on the right. McGlinchey is like a true right tackle. He needs help. He needs a tight end chip. He needs a running back chip. Like He is a run-blocking um, specialist. You can't draft a run-blocking specialist in the top 10. That guy's got to be a great pass protector, no matter what side he's playing on. Yeah. Tristan Lane, Wirfs is. Lane, Lane Johnson, by the way. I mean, the only offensive lineman in the history of football that's allowed to fall start and then we just pat him that's on the back. That's true. What the hell was that? No, 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 guys. No, he, that's not a false start. I know it looks like What the like hell was that? No, like he's moving a second and a half before everybody else. But he's just got awesome anticipation, man. He, it's not, he's not, it's not false. He's just, he's that good. Put him in the Doesn't freaking, seem- can, put him in Canton. The guy's You're allowed to in- false start. You're allowed to hold if you play offensive line in the NFL these days. I mean, they're really helping these guys that. out. It was it's amazing. Like blatant false starts, and, and we had to be explained by... Brian Baldinger, how no, no, what you're seeing is not a false start. It's unbelievable quickness. No, it's actually, we're slowing it down right now and seeing that it's a false start. 